What's going on everyone? Today I want to talk about an app that I've just recently created and actually got verified and published on the Google Play Store. Uh, this app is called Wiredless. So it's actually a pun uh, or maybe a combination of the word wired and wireless. And what this app does is actually let you take a wired controller, so let's say an Xbox 360 controller, plug it into uh, an Android device, and it lets you basically use the Android device as a wireless transmitter, converting that wired controller into a wireless controller on your PC. So we can walk through uh, sort of the initial setup and uh, essentially what the app does. So if we take a look at the description here, uh, you'll see that there's a link to the server side application. Um, so if we open that up, it takes us to this Google Drive link with all of the uh, downloads uh, included and the setup files. So it, the setup is pretty straightforward. Uh, there is a readme file here and I definitely recommend going through that. It's just a quick setup, but it can be a little confusing if you don't do it the right way uh, or if you don't install all the necessary components. But essentially you just need to install one of these MSI files. So if you have a 32-bit, you install the x86. If you have a 64-bit, you install the x64 uh, install. Basically, this is a driver that emulates a virtual Xbox 360 or X input controller on your PC. So the code and the application on the server, or the PC application that I wrote, requires that driver to be installed. Uh, so essentially, all you do is just install that. Then you would run the application found in one of these uh, folders here. So I have a 64-bit machine, so I would install the 64-bit MSI, and then I would open up the wireless server x64 folder, and then just run the exe that's found here. Um, and since I have that locally, I can go ahead and show you sort of what that looks like. All right, so if we take a look at the devices and printers before we start, uh, you'll see a few things. You'll see the computer itself that I'm using, uh, and then some multimedia devices, but you don't see any sort of game controller, right? So if we take a look at the EXE that you have to run, in this case, again, the 64-bit for my 64-bit machine, uh, we double-click that, and you'll hear that Windows chime. And essentially what that's done now is created a virtual Xbox or X input controller. So if we go to Game Controller Settings and Properties, we can see now that we have a controller uh, with all of the axes and buttons of a traditional X input controller. And it even says that the controller is an Xbox 360 for Windows controller. So obviously, you know, nothing's plugged in at the moment. We didn't actually physically plug in a controller. We've just created a virtual one. And that's the reason why you need that uh, virtual bus MSI installer. That creates the virtual controller. So now, now that we have that set up, we just need to run the actual application on our phone. So you can see we just select the wireless application and you're met with the app. So there are instructions in this white window here uh, that sort of walk you through what exactly you need to do to make the connection, but I'll just walk through in this video a little more explicitly. So you'll see that there's an option to enter in the IP address. So uh, we would just need to get the IP address, which is listed in the server code here. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in that IP address, and I'll show you what happens when you hit the connect button. So when you hit the connect button, you're met with a video ad. Uh, if you notice at the top, it says reward in uh, a certain amount of seconds. If you close out of that, or try to close out before the video ends, you see this uh, window that pops up that says close video, or you uh, close video question mark, you will lose your reward. So if you close the video early without waiting, it says in the IP address bar, watch the video to connect. Uh, so this was done intentionally, uh, just as a way for me to earn a little bit of ad revenue. Uh, essentially, the reward that you're getting is the connection, and you just need to wait for that video to finish, and it'll connect your phone to the server side. 
So I'll go ahead and enter in my IP address right now, wait for the video to end, and show you what happens when you make that connection. All right, now that we have the video finished and I closed out of it, uh, you would typically see the IP address listed here, uh, but just to keep that sort of out of the way, I've just entered in something without hitting the connect button again. Uh, that way it just hides my IP address. Uh, but right now we should be connected, so if we take a look again at the controller settings, and now we take our Xbox 360 controller plugged into an OTG adapter and plug that into the phone. Okay, now that we've got our phone connected to our controller, again, just plug directly into it. You can see the controller is on and being powered by the phone. We can control the entirety of the Xbox 360 controller. And since we have analog triggers, again, we can move the Z axes with the L and R button. We can use the Y rotation and X rotation on the right analog stick, D-pad and face buttons, start select, L1, L2, L3, R3. So what we're doing again is transmitting the controller inputs from our Xbox controller to the phone and then sending that to the computer wirelessly over your Wi-Fi router. So the benefit of this over Bluetooth is you have infinite range in your home and you have uh, basically no sort of bandwidth limitation. So it's gonna be happening almost instantaneously. You're not gonna notice any lag with it. And another interesting thing now, so if we take our phone and we unplug the Xbox 360 controller, we can also use something like a Logitech PC controller. So I can go ahead and plug that controller in and select the D input option. So the reason why we have to select the input is that the Xbox controller, uh, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, use a different sort of connection protocol. Uh, so it's called X input. So if we use any sort of Xbox controller, we have to select X input. If we use anything that's not a not an Xbox controller, then we'll need to use the D input. So D input would be something like the Logitech controller I have here, uh, as well as the uh, something like a PlayStation 4 wired controller. Basically anything that's not Microsoft. Uh, but now that we've selected that, it should work exactly the same. So we still have it as an Xbox controller uh, on the PC side, but we're using our Logitech controller. So now this also adds the benefit of not only allowing you to use an Xbox controller wirelessly, but another PC controller and also have it read as an Xbox controller. And if you're a PC gamer, you would know that uh, almost every PC game that has controller support uh, will absolutely con uh, support the X input controller, but not necessarily support uh, something like direct input or like a PlayStation 4 controller. So this adds another layer of benefit. Now you're able to convert and uh, non -Xbox, a non-Xbox controller to an Xbox controller. And again, it's the same thing. We have all the face buttons, the Z-axis, because we don't have analog triggers. It's either not pressed down or fully pressed down. Uh, there's no analog with that, but there are two analog sticks, face buttons and everything. And again, there's no lag involved and it'll work with basically any PC game that works with uh, X input controllers or Xbox controllers. So let's say we bring up the Dolphin application. Uh, just to sort of give a demonstration, we can play Super Mario Kart Wii. And I already have the controller map. This is a good game to test since it uses the, or it can use the GameCube controller, which is very similar to, you know, a traditional controller like we're using now. But you can see there's no lag, you know, selecting any options or anything like that. If there is any lag, it's going to be just because Dolphin uh, may not run the best on my computer. But, you know, you can see we have an Xbox controller that we've mapped in Dolphin, but we're not actually using an Xbox controller. Again, we're using a Logitech direct input controller.
And you notice I, button one is actually read as button A. Um, that's just because the way that the controller board is set up. Uh, so you might get slightly different face buttons, but all of the analog sticks and all of the triggers should be the same. You can see, you know, we're not really running into any issues. And Mario's turning exactly as I'm turning. And it's, you know, it's basically one-to-one -one as if I had the controller plugged directly into my computer. And that's really nice. This is really just a comfortable setup, especially when I have uh, my gaming computer plugged into my TV. Now I can just sit at the couch and I don't have to lean forward or get a wire running across my living room or something along the lines of that. It's really great. And what's nice is, let's say I don't find this controller comfortable for this game. All I have to do is unplug it plug in my Xbox 360 controller. Maybe I find that more comfortable in this case. Switch to X input. And now that's working just fine. So I didn't have to worry about, you know, unplugging the controller from the computer or anything along the lines like that. It's just plug and play. I tried to make it as straightforward as I possibly could. And I think I've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, the one caveat with this is that, so if we unpause the game, and let's say I close out of the application, you know, notice now it's controlling my phone, but it's not controlling the controller. So if I go back, now I can, let's see, now I can drive again and, and control. But if I close out of the app or go to a different app, it stops working altogether. Uh, so the issue with that, uh, is that it, and especially um, this issue also, the issue also occurs if you turn the phone off or turn, turn the screen off in this case, but the second you open up the phone again or open up the application, uh, your connection is made again. You don't have to sit through and watch the video or anything like that. Uh, it's just that the app has to be on and open on your phone. And this isn't really that big of a deal. Um, the application is designed actually, it's written to keep your phone awake. So your screen will never shut off even if you have a normal timer because the app is uh, coded to keep your phone screen on. But once you're connected, you can just turn the brightness down and just leave it. You won't encounter any other ads. Uh, the ad is only, the video ad is only encountered when you make that connection uh, at the start of your session. And then there's also a banner ad at the bottom, but those aren't really intrusive and I haven't had an issue with those either. Uh, but other than the issue again where the app has to be open, uh, this works flawlessly. You know, again, you're using your Wi-Fi router, so there's no bandwidth limitation or not any that you're going to encounter. And you're also using your um, your Android device as that connector, as that transmitter. So as long as your phone is charged or you use an older phone uh, with a charged battery, you'll never encounter an issue. Uh, so it also removes sort of the AA battery requirement if you have, let's say, an Xbox 360 controller that doesn't have a rechargeable battery. Uh, as of right now, it only supports one controller, but I'm working on uh, additional support for multiple controllers. And what I mean by that is, uh, when you run the server-side application, it's only listening for one controller. Uh, you can use, again, any controller you want plugged into the phone, but you're only going to receive uh, basically player one on the Windows computer. But again, I'm working to add support for player two, player three, and player four. Uh, so if you had multiple people that wanted to use the same method on the same network. Uh, the app also does not save your IP address. So if I completely close out of it, open it back up, you can see it's asking for my IP address again. There's no drop down. I did that more of a, as a security measure, just so you don't accidentally uh, leave your IP address in the phone and have somebody else access it. Um, it's more again just to protect you, uh, protect myself in case I made that mistake. Um, you know, to keep your information sensitive or to keep your sensitive information private. Uh, that's really important to me. And, you know, it might be a mild inconvenience, but I think ultimately it's a good move. So I hope you all enjoy this application. I hope you give it a download um, and check it out if it's something that you've wanted. 
Uh, again, I've always wanted a way to convert my wired controller into a wireless controller. And I think uh, the solution I've come up with is pretty straightforward and it uses a lot of technology that you already have, uh, including a basically just an Android phone that should be running, I believe, Android 4.4 and above uh, that should be supported. Uh, ideally, the newer the phone, the better, just because uh, the app layout, you can see from the screenshot, is more of a taller phone. Uh, you know, one of these 16 by 9 aspect ratios, or I'm sorry, the uh, 18 by 9 or even 19 by 9 aspect ratio. So those taller screens. Uh, but using it on something like a Galaxy S4 that has OTG, that worked fine as well for me in my testing. So again, please check out this app. I'll leave a link to the Play Store download in the description, as well as a link to the server-side application. Uh, but again, the server-side is also linked in the bio of the app, so if you ever need to access it, you can always reach it from there. And I hope you guys enjoy this, and let me know if you have any feedback, any ways I can improve it. Uh, if it's something that you like, I can, again, invest more time and try to look into the multiplayer solution as well. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.